It's time for another musical interlude. Let's get started. Talking with people with music in their genes, their blood, and in their soul. You are watching Musical Interlude. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Musical Interlude. I am your host, Casey Bell, and today's guest is singer, musician, and writer, and composer, Lacey James. Let's get started. All right, so when did you first um, notice your musical talent? Oh, gosh. Um, probably, uh, well, when I started really enjoying music, I was very small, and I, I know I used to go and sing outside when I would walk the dog or anything we had to do at school. You know, I loved all the music, um, musical activities, but I also was told by my parents that when I was about two, we had to drive across country and I was singing commercials the whole time, driving them crazy. <laughs> so I think that was probably the first sign. <laughs> that's, that's cool. <laughs> so when did you um, decide to do it as a profession as opposed to, because the art, the art world as a whole is seen as a hobby still, unfortunately, even yes. though without it, I don't think this world would be going on without art as a whole. So when did yeah. you decide I'm going to do this as my career? I mean, you know, growing up, I didn't, I, I didn't really know exactly what I was going to do because I had a lot of interests, but I did used to, you know, have dreams sometimes of, I would like, you know, sing in the hairbrush in the mirror and, you know, practice my dance moves, like all the pop stars. <laughs> so I thought about it, you know, and I, I was in some musicals in school and even community theater a little bit. Um, but even in college, I still wasn't sure. Um, but then at some point, uh, I actually was, I did a semester in Ireland in college and um, I was in a pub and that somebody asked me to sing this song. I said, I knew the streets of Laredo. And I had learned that in school, you know, and, and they really wanted me to sing it. And when I was singing it, like everybody just got quiet. And so even though I had, you know, sort of flirted with the idea of, of going into a, a performing career, or I, I was always a writer as well. <clears throat> that was sort of the moment where I was like, I feel the communication, the effect than what I can give to people and that it means something to them and it feels good to me, you know, means something to me. So um, that kind of was the last thing that really made me decide to do it. And also thinking about a musical, I'm a writer, I had never written any songs, but I was like, how can I use everything to create together and something that I would enjoy? So that was around the time that I made that decision, probably during college. Amazing. So how did you, I mean, today you can go on YouTube and learn anything, but back in the day, there wasn't really much of any, you just had to figure stuff out. So how did you figure out how to get into the business and what did you do? Um, well, I read a lot of books about the business. That's what I usually do. I'm like, well, I better learn about everything. And, you know, I probably really... I mean, I did learn a lot about the business, but I wasn't especially great at the business. So, um, but it was all helpful. And really, I want, I realized that I wanted to actually write the music to like, to be involved in the production side. So um, it was just so much to learn. And uh, I just started writing songs. And I even went back to school to community college for music, just only music. Um, after my regular degree. So that helped me kind of like um, get on a schedule and pick up the skills that maybe um, I hadn't really had yet. And I had played the cello growing up, but I left it aside because I, I really was more into pop music by the time I was a teenager. And, you know, so I, I could still kind of <clears throat> play a little bit, but I don't have my cello anymore. So, but, um, you know, then I had to I was writing songs and um, then, you know, I was able to make, <clears throat> excuse me, my first record with some really great musicians. So I learned a lot during that process. 
That was probably, um, <clears throat> I don't know if you really remember, maybe you remember that, uh, I think you actually noticed me b back at that time and I've sort of kept up off and on with you since then. And, um, that was a long time ago. So <laughs> I had a break in between and I came back many years later and did another album, but, um, I was in between, I was a dancer. I was, I, that's why I moved away from music for a while because I was pursuing dance and choreography, but, um, it all, I feel like it's all, for me, it's all part of the same thing. So whatever I learned from music or dance, it feeds into the other thing or even writing. So um, it's, I don't really feel like I ever stopped making my work, but it was just taking different forms, you know, at different times. Yes, I do remember that. Actually, I do. Um, when you, I think you, it was kind of like a dance company you had. I did. I well, and that's what happened. I I started off doing songs and I made an album, but it took a long time to make the album. And I was also becoming a dancer, and I realized I have to dance. I really just have to pursue this while I'm young enough to do it. You know, because I didn't grow up really training, and um, so then I had a small company and I did a lot of pieces, and you know that was what I did for many years, and I still was doing my music some but i i never really had um very much live performing as a musician until actually in the last 10 years and so that was a big because i couldn't really play something to accompany myself i had written on keyboards and written a lot of parts but and that we used some of them in the album but i also just wanted to work with musicians that were better than me so you know, I had, and then I started dancing. So I had never really learned to accompany myself. And that actually was a big um, stumbling block for me when I came back to it, because to be able to, you know, you can't always necessarily have other musicians around and especially if you want to perform frequently. So um, now I finally can play something <laughs> enough to accompany myself. So I've been actually performing more uh, music than I ever had before in my life live. So, um, you know, it's all just been a really process that went through a lot of different uh, directions. Talk about your song, Old Languages. What is the, I guess you can say, what's, what is the song about and why did you write it? What was the inspiration? So the, uh, that's actually, it is kind of a, a mystical love song idea, but it also uh, was very inspired by the idea of um, how ancient languages can get lost or, you know, languages that a culture is disappearing, the language may disappear as well. And it's just very interesting to me, you may have read some about this before, that um you know, certain, in one language, the way that something is expressed cannot always be um, completely exactly translated into another language sometimes. So it's not just the words, it's like the whole way of thinking that can be lost if it's lost. And so that was in my mind. And I, and I was just writing of um, the different, uh, different cultures I used some some words to express uh sort of storytellers and the the griot and the troubadour and shaniki and people from different cultures that were probably the songwriters the storytellers the bards you know whatever culture it was that sort of passed that down and passed the history down as well for a lot of those cultures so um that's a lot, <laughs> but it is also just, a, you know, a love song about, you know, before our, our time is done, you know, let's not let go of this before it's too late, you know, and, and it's um, kind of like that as well. So um, I can always talk a lot about my songs and then I'm like, should I? <laughs> because it's people fine. also want to have their own, you know, images, but um you know, so that those that was the basics of of where that came from, I would say. So I noticed you did a um, few virtual concerts. What is it like going from live to virtual? Yeah, um, the live streaming kind of thing. It's well, you know, that was something 
because of the kind of music that I do and um, just f several other factors, but mainly because of that, I thought that is something I really wanted to get into. And it's as hard as things have been, you know, in the last year or so with the pandemic, that was the, the time that pushed me to finally do that. So I've been doing it a lot and I'm, I'm planning to continue, you know, even after the pandemic, because that, um, I really like it. And it's, it's a whole other way of performing because you have the interaction with people that are there live with you and, and you can talk to them if they're putting up comments. And, um, I really, really enjoy that. And, uh, it's very spontaneous and, you know, you can sort of, um, it's more like a community. So I, I like it. <laughs> You know, and you learn a lot. You learn a lot. I was busking some before that started. Before the pandemic, I would go in the park and I did a lot of busking for a while. And that was also somewhat similar because um, you don't know who's going to be coming by. You don't know if they're into the kind of music you do. And some days, like, no one even looks at you or says anything, but then other days people just love it so much and they, they come up and they're like, oh God, you know, I was having a terrible day and you just made me feel so good. And so it, it's really, um, it's similar to that too. And that, you know, you may have some people that know you that come to listen, but sometimes it's just people that stumble across what you're doing. One of the things I will say about the art world is I don't know how long it's been, but I know for a while now they've had access to virtual concerts, but they never did it because I guess it, it just wasn't on their mind. And now that they're forced to do it, I like it too. And I hope that once the pandemic is over, they don't get rid of it completely, that they do yeah. a mixture of live. And because you, you're now opening your audience up to people who don't live in your state, people who don't live in your country, as opposed to just people who are willing to drive to that particular spot. So exactly. I think it, it continues. Yeah, I agree. And, and that is why, because like, especially if you're doing something that's not, you know, maybe super commercial or really mainstream, then you have more of a chance for people that would be interested in what you're doing to be able to find you, I think. Amazing. So my last question I have for you today is if you could collaborate with a musician, um, whether they're known or unknown, whether they're dead or whether they're alive, anyone who inspired you in your journey in the music, who would it be and why? You know, there's so many people and I remember I watched um, some of your videos. So I did think that this question was going to be coming, but then I forgot that this question was coming. So, hmm. Um, and so whatever I say, it could be so many other people too, but I, I think I'm just going to say right now, Brian Eno, because there is a part of me that has always played with um, electronic music and when I was actually in, in studying music in school, I took some electronic composition and I had to do like experimental electronic stuff. And, and I always like, you know, using atmospheric sound and, and playing in the studio. Anyone that worked with me in the studio is going to tell you some crazy stories of how let's try this. And, you know, it's, I love that in the studio playing with the, or even at, at my own home studio, but um, I don't get to do that nearly enough. So if I was collaborating <clears throat> with Brian Eno, he would be, I would just be sitting there watching him, you know, but I, it would be a very um, amazing experience. And maybe we would do something cool together if he would ever try that with me. <laughs> so I'll say him for now. Dancing character.
That is all the time we have for you today on Musical Interlude. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch, viewers and audience, and to Lacey James. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day.